What's up, Kim Peeps? Who is ready for one more thrilling video? In this video, we are gonna translate among reaction energy profile representations, particulate representations, chemical equations of a chemical reaction occurring in the presence and absence of a catalyst. Breaking it down. One, we are going to define catalyst. Easy. Dose. We are going to explain how a catalyst functions in terms of lowering the activation energy of an elementary step in a reaction mechanism and by providing a new and faster reaction mechanism. A little trickier. And number three, define a heterogeneous and homogeneous catalyst. First, what the heck is a catalyst? First thing we need to do, define it. They are substances that affect the rate of a reaction without being consumed. Catalysts work by providing an alternative mechanism for the reaction with a lower activation energy. So as you take a look at the two animations that are occurring on your screen, on one side, you have a reaction that is not catalyzed. Notice the relatively high activation energy for that reaction. Also notice that the rate is gonna be slower because not as many particles will have that high activation energy. On the other side of your screen, Notice you have a catalyzed reaction. Because the activation energy has been lowered due to the presence of a catalyst, a greater number of reactant particles has sufficient activation energy in order to react and form product, speeding up the reaction. Now, how can we identify a catalyst? Well, in a reaction mechanism, they are consumed in an early step and produced in a later step. As you look at the sample reaction for the decomposition of ozone into oxygen gas, you're provided with the overall reaction and then a proposed mechanism. Recognize that the chlorine in this proposed mechanism is a catalyst. And it's a catalyst because it's consumed in an early step and produced in a later step, which differs from our intermediate definition in which it is produced in an early step and consumed in a later step. Recognize that in the overall reaction, when we sum the two elementary steps together, neither the catalyst nor the intermediate end up in the overall reaction. Boom, catalysts. Now, you're often gonna be asked to think about catalysts and how they're represented in energy profiles. In an energy profile, they're gonna lower the activation energy, which again means that a greater number of particles will possess the required minimum activation energy and a greater number of collisions will therefore be successful. Come back to this thriller animation. This is essentially how a catalyst works and what you're looking for in a catalyzed reaction is a reduced activation energy, a lower hump. Now, each step in the reaction mechanism is represented with its own hump in the profile. So as they come back to this reaction mechanism that describes the decomposition of ozone into oxygen gas, recognize that the catalyzed pathway for this proposed mechanism reduces the activation energy in order for the reaction to proceed. And there are two humps, one for each step of the mechanism. The slow step will have the hump with the higher activation energy. So again, as I come back to my mechanism to describe the decomposition of ozone, and I think about depicting this in an energy profile, recognize that the second hump or the slow hump will have the higher activation energy. It doesn't always have to be the second hump that's higher. It could be the first hump. Again, it just depends on which step is the slow step. Now, a couple different types of catalysts that you wanna be familiar with. Recognize that homogeneous catalysts are in the same phase as the reactant particles. And generally, the homogeneous catalysts react with one of the reactant molecules to form a more stable, activated complex with a lower activation energy. Let's come back once again to this proposed mechanism for the decomposition of ozone, which is an important one to think about because it's the layer of ozone in our atmosphere that helps protect us from utter destruction. Notice that in the mechanism, ozone reacts with an atom of chlorine gas, decomposing the ozone into oxygen and ClO. The ClO then reacts with an atom of oxygen, forming more oxygen gas. As you think about this mechanism, again, that chlorine is acting as a catalyst. It will decompose the ozone into oxygen and our intermediate ClO, which will react with an atom of oxygen, forming more oxygen gas, and our chlorine will be produced in the final step. Again, an example of a homogeneous catalyst because it's in the same phase. Take a look at this thrilling animation that illustrates this process that occurs in our ozone layer here on Earth. 
It's also an important illustration as to why chlorofluorocarbons were considered so hazardous when it came to the depletion of our ozone layer. The chlorine in those chlorofluorocarbons catalyzed the decomposition of ozone. Check it out. Chlorine decomposes the ozone into oxygen gas. That's step one. The ClO then reacts with an atom of oxygen to form more O2, but then there's our catalyst ready to do some more destruction. Take a moment, pause the vid, think about it. Heterogeneous catalyst, on the other hand, is one in which the catalyst is in a different phase than the reactant particles. Heterogeneous catalyst will often hold a reactant molecule in its proper orientation so that the reaction can occur more quickly. Sometimes they also speed up the reaction by helping to break bonds. Take a look at this animation that's going to repeat on your screen. Your catalyst is this solid nickel. Ethene and hydrogen adsorb to it again sort of holding those reactant molecules in place, allowing for the reaction to occur. Allowing for the reaction to occur at a faster rate, faster than it would without that solid nickel catalyst. But again, heterogeneous, because the reactants are in the gas phase, the catalyst is in the solid phase. And lastly, I just wanna mention that there are a lot of biological reactions that require a catalyst to proceed at any reasonable rate. Many times we reference the catalysts in a biological sense as enzymes. And again, enzymes generally work by allowing the reactant molecules a surface at which to adhere or absorb so that the reaction can occur. In biological reactions, oftentimes the reactants are very large and complex. So your enzyme acts as a surface to allow for those reactants to come together in the correct orientation. And that brings us to the end. We are done.